It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to construct and interpret a linear function using a table of values. Here's our lesson today. Our objectives are that you, the student, will construct a function to model a linear relationship. You will also identify the rate of change of a linear function and identify the initial value of a linear function. Here's the question I'd like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson. How do you write an equation from a model of a linear relationship? All right, let's go on and we're going to talk about completing the table. This table models a linear relationship. So we're told that the table represents a linear relationship between x and y, and we're asked what is the value of y when x is equal to 4. So when we look at our table, we go down, we know that we want to identify where x is equal to 4, and we want to identify the y value for the input x. So understanding that we're given a linear relationship in this table, and a linear relationship always has a constant rate of change between the x values and then also between the y values. Looking at our x, negative 2 to 0 has an increase of 2. 0 to 2, add 2. 2 to 4, another increase of 2. So x values are increasing at a constant rate of 2. Let's look at y. We start at negative 2, we go to 4, an increase of 6. 4 to 10, an increase of 6. So 10 to the next value, the unknown, will also be an increase of 6. 10 plus 6 is 16. So we can say that when x is equal to 4, y is going to be equal to 16. Now let's identify the slope and y-intercept of this function modeled in the table. This is the same table from the question before. In this table, y is a linear function of x. What is the slope and y-intercept of the function shown in the table? To find slope, we're going to use the ratio of change in y to change in x. So our vertical change as a ratio to our horizontal change. There are multiple ways to find slope. This is one way to do it. Later in the video, I'll show you how to use the slope formula. So we already identified here that our change in y from our previous problem is to repeatedly add 6. And our change in x was to repeatedly add 2. So we have a ratio of our vertical or change in y to be 6 to our change in x of 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the slope of this linear function modeled in this table is 3. We also were asked to identify the y-intercept. The y-intercept of a function when we're looking at a table, we want to look for the x value of 0 and identify its corresponding y value, which is 4 here. If I plotted this ordered pair on a coordinate plane, 0, 4, it would lie on the y-axis. So the line will pass through the y-axis at 4, making that the y-intercept of this linear function. So we have a linear function shown in the table has a slope of 3 and a y-intercept of 4. Now look, we're going to write the equation of the line represented by the relationship between x and y shown in the table. To do this, we're going to use slope-intercept form, which is y equal to m multiplied by x add b, where our slope is m and our y-intercept is b. Bringing forward that we just identified we had a slope of 3 and b, our y-intercept, is 4. So we use the variable m to represent slope and the variable b to represent the y-intercept. So let's bring our 3 over to our m and our 4 over to our b. 
and this is m multiplied by x, so 3 multiplied by x or 3x. So the equation y equals 3x plus 4 represents the linear relationship in this table. Now we want to talk about the solution of an equation. We are asked, does the point negative 6, negative 16 lie on the line represented by the relationship between x and y shown in the table? Show or explain your reasoning. Again, this is the same table we've been working with. So we're asked, does it lie on the line? Every one of these ordered pairs is a solution to this linear function or to this equation meaning that we could create, take a, an equation and create an input-output table and every one of these points that we find makes this equation true and is a point on the line. So to find out if this point is on the line, we are going to know that this represents an xy coordinate point and we're going to say that when x is negative 16, replace x in our equation with negative 6, and then we're going to say when y, our y coordinate is negative 16, y is negative 16, replace that. So now if we do this math, the first thing we want to do is rewrite it. That is 3 multiplied by negative 6, 3 times x. So 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. Negative 18 plus 4 is negative 14. Negative 16 does not equal negative 14. So seeing as when I enter negative 6, for x and negative 16 for y, that this does not result a true statement, this is not a point on the line. So the point negative 6, negative 16 does not lie on the line since it is not a solution of the equation of the line. Now it's your turn. I have a four part question for you. This is a different table. The table represents a linear relationship between x and y. Here's part a. What is the y-intercept of the function shown in the table? And show or explain your work. Part B, what is the slope of the function shown in the table? Be able to show or explain your work. Part C, write an equation of the line represented by the relationship between x and y shown in the table. And part D, does the point negative 8, negative 19 lie on the line represented by the relationship between x and y shown in the table? And be able to show or explain your reasoning. So I'd like you to pause the video here, answer all four parts, and then come back and hit play to see my work. Or you could do each part independently of the other and hit play and pause as you go through. Good luck. Welcome back. Let's review the part A solution. So again, we have this table that represents a linear relationship between X and Y. And part A is to identify the y-intercept of the function shown in the table. Reminding you that when we find the y-intercept, that is the point where the line crosses the y-axis. We also want to review that it's the ordered pair when x is 0, the y-coordinate is our b. So looking at our table, when x is 0, y is 5, that tells me that the y-intercept of the linear function shown in the table is 5. Here's part B. So if you're ready, we're going to go ahead and explain it, or you can pause and come back. In part B, we're identifying the slope of the function shown in the table. This time, I want to review slope using formula y subscript 2, or y2 subtract y1, all over. It's a ratio. To x2 subtract x1. So what this is, is the change in y. It's showing a change between two y coordinates. So if I look at this, it's vertical distance. I'm going to identify y1 and y2. So that's naming a point. The y coordinate of point 1, y coordinate of point 2, and you can pick any two points. I picked these, but randomly. You can pick any two points and you're going to get the same answer. So let's say if our y2 is 23 and our y1 is 14, we're going to subtract. Now let's identify our vertical rate of change between our x1, our coordinate of our first point, and coordinate of our second. So if this was y1, this has to be coordinate x1. 
So those have to make one point, point one, point two. So we're gonna come over here, x2, subtract x1, six subtract three, 23 subtract 14 is going to be nine, six subtract three is three, nine divided by three is three. So the slope of the linear relationship represented in this table is three. All right, here's part C. If you haven't done it, go ahead and pause. In part C, we're gonna write the equation of the line represented in the table. We are gonna do this in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, and we found out that m was three. b is the intercept, and we found out that b was five. We're gonna replace our m with three, our b with five. Let's write it nice, y equals, 3x plus 5 is the equation of the linear relationship in this table. And part D, if you need to pause to do your work, go ahead. <clears throat> Here's part D. We want to know if the point negative 8, negative 19 lies on the line represented in this linear relationship. So we're going to use the equation that we wrote. Remembering that this is an ordered pair, with our input x being negative eight and our output y being negative 19, our y is gonna negative 19. So the first thing we wanna do is three times negative eight, which is negative 24. Negative 24 plus five is a value of negative 19 and it checks, negative 19 equals negative 19. So therefore, since this ordered pair is an input and an output satisfies the equation, we can conclude that the point negative eight, negative 19 does lie on the line since it's a loose solution of the equation of the line. So again, what that means is if I graphed the equation in a coordinate plane, negative eight, negative 19 would be a point on the line. And there you have how to construct and interpret a linear function from a model or a table. And that's the magic of math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you'll subscribe and have a great day.